Praise Lord Church, we welcome you to this online service. It's such a joy to meet you through this online service. God is with you, amen, and His presence is with you. Can we all close our eyes from wherever you are and lift up our hands and tell Him, Lord, thank you for being with me. Thank you, Lord. We will serve you because you are our God. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve you, Lord, lifting holy hands in worship. We will not bow down to the gods of men. We will worship the God of Israel. Can we all sing? As for me and my house, we will serve you, Lord, lifting holy hands in worship. We will not bow down to the gods of men. We will worship the God of Israel. You are.
to see you more even as we worship Lord take control we give everything into your hands Lord in Jesus name we pray Amen come on church put your hands together he's a holy God can you sing that one more time
thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We love your name. We love your name. We love your name, God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. For your name is holy. And that is why, Lord, we worship you. Because you are a holy God. None can compare to your holiness. Oh, we love you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, church. Lift up your hands from wherever you are. And open up your mouth and say, Lord, thank you. You are holy. And I worship you, God. Oh, I worship you, Jesus. Lord, I worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. Lord, I worship you. I worship you. Lord, I worship you. I worship you. For your name is holy. Come on, church.
of your glory God fall on us fall fresh on us Holy Spirit we acknowledge you God that you are here with us thank you Lord though we are far from space and time Lord we are held together in Christ Jesus we've come to worship you we've come to offer you Lord an offer of praise, an offer of worship. Receive it in all. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Speak to us. Speak to our hearts. As you are our King, reign in us, God. Even as we wait for your word, speak to us in a way that we would embrace every step, Lord. Every walk in our lives may be glorifying to you thank you Jesus we give everything into your hands take control to you belong the glory and the honor and the praise in Jesus name we pray amen and amen what an honor it is to meet you through this online service I know that God is going to speak to you today that's why I'm excited and thrilled to welcome you the word of God is powerful. The word of God will speak to our situation. You see, we are in a lockdown in Bangalore, but you might be watching in from a place where you are quarantined or perhaps in your city, the cases of COVID-19 is increasing drastically. But wherever you are, God is with you. There is hope. And the word of God today will minister to you and speak to your heart and encourage you. We have special events coming up. Special events coming up, specially related to the coronavirus, where we'll be specially speaking over you and declaring over you the promises of God. And of course, I want to be praying with you as well. Uh, the other details will be passed on in the next few days to come. And of course, if you need prayer and support during the season, there's a number on your screen. So call us or text us and we are there to help you and we are there to counsel you. We are believing with you for a complete turnaround, for restoration and for God's healing to manifest in your life. Hallelujah. Come on. And before we go into the message, I want to welcome uh, those of us who are joining us for the first time. If this is the first time you're joining us online, there's a number on your screen. Text hello and we'll be able to reach out to you, pray with you. And of course, we will send you our devotional blogs. And also, you may send your prayer requests to that number. But I know God is going to speak to you today. We'll go to Genesis 6 because we are in the ark story, the story of Noah's ark. You see, 1 Peter chapter 3, Apostle Peter, he sees the salvation story. And what Jesus had to go through on the cross in the story of Noah's Ark. You see, there was a worldwide flood thousands of years ago. And so are we today in a worldwide flood, so to speak. We are in a pandemic. But just like how God saved a family in the Ark, God is able to save you and me in the Ark called Lord Jesus Christ. Noah and his family were safe because the waves and the winds and the waters fell on the ark, not on the family members. Today we are safe in Christ Jesus because Jesus took upon himself the waves and the wrath of God, the judgment, God, judgment of God upon himself on the cross. And we are in him and we are safe, safe from the waves and the judgment that is falling on the world. Come on, you and I are safe in Christ Jesus. I want you to look at your neighbor and tell them, I am safe in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Type that in the live chat. Why don't you do that? Type that in the live chat and say, I am safe in Christ my ark. Come on, we are safe in the ark. God is a good God. So he has kept us safe in the ark. Noah was not perfect. Neither were his children or the wife and the wives of the sons. But they were in the perfect art. So today, you and I are not called to be perfect. 
we are called to believe in Christ Jesus and when you believe in Christ Jesus his perfection is imputed to us and when Noah was in the ark the the flood worked for his good when everybody were losing Noah was gaining when everybody was going down when everyone and their possessions were being lost Noah gained more and Noah was elevated to a higher position i want to tell you my friend the flood is working for your good because you are in Christ Jesus the ark and just like how the flood came to an end i declare let's believe that this pandemic is coming to an end in jesus name hallelujah this is coming to an end check the history of the world of humanity every pandemic every epidemic that has hit humanity has come to an end finally and ultimately and this is going to come to an end very very soon and i know god is working this together for our good hallelujah come on so the flood came to an end and when noah and the family came out they found themselves on a mountain that's where we are in the story let's go to genesis 8 i'm going to read the first four verses and of course few more verses later but this is what the word says and god remembered noah and every living thing and all the animals that were with him in the ark and god made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters subsided The fountains of the deep and the windows of heaven were also stopped and the rain from heaven was restrained and the waters receded continually from the earth at the end of 150 days the waters decreased then the ark rested in the 7th month on the 17th day of the month on the mountains of Ararat that's where we are it rested on Ararat remember the name Ararat just say the name out A R A R A T okay Ararat that's the name of the mountain and what was the day it was the 17th day which month was it the 7th month now why would god take trouble why was the holy spirit so careful in giving us the details of the day the month and the name of the mountain why is that significant you see friend every detail in the bible is significant it all points to the finished work of jesus and everything is there for the benefit of the believer come on right so every detail is divinely inspired why seventh month why the 17th day why mount ararat why not any other mountain why is the name given to us and i want to tell you today because you and i are in christ jesus he died rose again and today he's seated at the right hand of the father just like how the ark was on the flood waters and the ark rose up to a mountain and rested on a mountain you see the ark speaks of our lord jesus christ so the ark rose above and rested on mount ararat so is jesus risen and seated at the right hand of the father you and i are in christ jesus in the ark so when you look at the world you look at the world from a mountain So the first thing I want to remind you is this we are on a mountain the mountain called Ararat and when you look at the world you look at the world through the eyes through the perspective of being on the top let's have the Ararat perspective that's why you read the title of the message today is this having the Ararat perspective it's called the Ararat perspective you and I are on a mountain and we are on this mount ararat that's where christ is and that's where we are and today when you look at this pandemic when you listen to the news you know uh, in the tv you know channels and uh, you know facebook and social media when you hear about what's happening in the world i pray that god will let us see things through his eyes through the ararat perspective so perspective number 1 is this i am on resurrection ground we are on resurrection ground and i'll tell you why because the days are so significant it's the 17th day of the 7th month later we will come to know that the 7th month is very significant to the people of israel it's on the 14th day of the 7th month that passover is celebrated and it was on passover that jesus christ was crucified on the cross but it's not the 14th day we are talking about we are talking about the 17th day now the 17th day is the third day after 14 and that is the day jesus rose again the ark rested on mount ararat on the very day jesus would be resurrected years ago thousands of years ago friend 
you and i are in christ jesus and by that we are on mount ararat and that means we are on resurrection ground hallelujah somebody type in the live chat and say i am on resurrection ground what does that mean you look at the world through a resurrection perspective you look at everything that you go through and you say i am a resurrected being i have the resurrected power of christ on the inside ephesians 1:19 says that that we have the same power that raised christ jesus from the dead and when you look at things in the world when you go through stuff in the world you say i have the resurrection power of jesus i am going to rise up no matter how many times i fall perhaps in this season you tripped perhaps in this season you stumbled perhaps in this season you're going through a period of loss a, a period of financial struggle a period of you know sickness in your body but god is saying look at life from the ararat mountain that means you are on resurrection ground regardless of how many times you fall you can always get up you will always rise up to your feet and say i am the righteousness of god in christ jesus hallelujah just because you fell it does not mean it's over just because you lost somebody you lost something you lost a job you lost your finances you lost your momentum you lost your routine you lost your health it does not mean you are fallen forever you You are a resurrected being the same power that raised christ jesus from the dead resides in you wow what, what an amazing passage this is what an amazing truth this is you and i are on resurrection ground oh that's why every time you fall you stumble you make a mistake you fail you've got to remind yourself to get up again get up again i'm a resurrected being That's why I love the passage in Micah chapter 7 verse number 8 7 means it's over it's complete but 8 means new beginning Micah 7 and verse number 8 he says oh you enemy don't rejoice over me don't gloat over me because I'm fallen the lord is my light when i sit in the darkness and i will rise again hallelujah look at your neighbor and tell them i will rise up again because we are on resurrection ground regardless of what happens around you know this you are a resurrected being always be risen up on the inside always have your hopes up always dream bigger always hope bigger because god's resurrection power dwells on the inside i'm reminded of this uh, uh, funny little story where this grandma grandmother she takes this young man to the church the young young little kid you know and uh, in the middle of the service the kid would stand up and just speak over you know look, looking at other people in in the church and the grandma said sit down young man I didn't bother I wasn't bothered at all you know so the grandma said again sit down I tell you sit down again but this guy isn't listening okay but finally the gra- grandma reached over and gave him a little pinch on his arm and said sit down I tell you and he sat down but after a while he looks at granny and says grandma you know what on the inside I'm still standing okay can you imagine the plight of grandma that day come on of course parents have experienced that quite many times especially when our kids were young but i want you to have this mentality on the inside i'm still standing on the inside i'm still standing i might feel like i'm in a financial struggle but on the inside i'm still standing it might feel like i'm losing but on the inside i'm still standing oh come on somebody needs to look at their neighbor and say on the inside i am still standing the rrr perspective number 1 you and i are on resurrection ground amen we are on resurrection ground now on the resurrection ground there is no curse so perspective number 2 is this you are on the same mountain but here's another angle at looking at things the curse has been reversed i want you to say that the curse has been reversed why am i saying that because the word ararat means curse reversed wow isn't that so significant so profound that's why the word the name is given to us it means the curse is reversed friend you and i are on cursed reverse ground not only are we on resurrection ground but on cursed reverse ground because when jesus rose again the curse of adam the curse that is in the world has been reversed you and i don't live by the fall of adam we live by the resurrection of our second adam you and i don't start our lives from the garden of eden we start our lives from an upper garden where the garden tomb was where jesus rose again 
you and i may not be from eve but we are actually from the church that was typified in mary magdalene when she was in the garden where jesus rose again we are on curse rivers ground you see there are quite a few words for uh, curse in the hebrew language one of those is kalal okay if you watch passion of the christ movie when judas betrays jesus all these little kids come and taunt him and torment him you know a picture of how demons and you know uh, the other uh, devil you know started taunting judas and finally ended up committing suicide but the movie depicts as children you know just taunting him and cursing him and they say the word kalal 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 you know you find that's one word for curse okay so they were saying you are cursed you are cursed but there's another wo- word that's called arar Now arar is a word for bitter curse and that's the word that is used in ararat you see arar is bitter curse ararat is reversed curse is reversed so i want to tell you during this pandemic it's not just that you are resurrected not just that god will protect you but then god will cause this curse to work for your good oh hallelujah this is amazing god will turn this curse for your good because we are on curse reverse ground so don't just believe for god to protect you during this flood you got to have the boldness and the gumption to look at your abba father in heaven and say lord i am on curse rivers ground so reverse this curse for my good i want you to raise your hand wherever you are and say lord reverse this curse for my good number 1 we are redeemed from the curse galatians 3:13 jesus became curse on the cross but then let's go further the blessing of abraham needs to come upon us don't just stop where the curse is cancel but go to a place where the curse is reversed that means this curse this evil in the world today regardless of whatever happens in your whatever is happening in your life can it can the evil can be turned for your good god is turning the flood to your good type that in the live chat and say the flood is turned for my good the flood is turned for my good so perspective number 2 is this we are on curse reverse ground no more curses hallelujah no more curses amen moving on we have we've been given another important truth in this passage you see it's the 17th day of the 7th month the number 17 in the bible speaks of victory yes victory and when you study a little bit about the topography of uh, mount ararat The mountains of Ararat are located in the Lake Van region of eastern Turkey in the area of Armenia. It's a range of mountains. Ararat is a range of mountains. Its highest peak reaches 17000 feet. Many years ago, this amazing man of God and an archaeologist, a researcher, Dr. Ron Wyatt, he claimed to discover to have discovered Mount Ararat. He's ha- he has a few researches done and he proves from various facts that this could very well be the mountain on which the ark was rested okay and he gives various proofs and there are there are pictures of it available on the internet there are videos also available in his documentary but the fact i want you to focus on is that it's 17000 feet above sea level now the date 17 was already there but now again you have 17000 feet above sea level wow and did you know that mount ararat is the largest mountain in the world yes it's the largest mountain right we know that mount everest is the tallest but mount ararat is the largest mountain all right now 17 17 it's it's recurring right 17th day you have 17000 feet number 17 is the number of victory that means we are on victory ground Wow, come on. Number 1, we are on resurrection ground. Number 2, we are on curse reverse ground. Number 3, we are on victory ground. You and I are victors in Christ Jesus because 17 is the number of victory. I love the verse in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse number 14. Paul says, "Praise be to God who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus." Not most of the times, not many a times, not a few times. not mostly not 90% of the time but always if you can have the bold faith today to claim that promise this blessing belongs to you praise be to god who always causes us to triumph in christ jesus raise your hand wherever you are and repeat after me say praise be to god who always causes me to triumph 
wow isn't this amazing he always causes us to triumph this is such an amazing promise i want you to take this into your heart today wherever you are whatever situations you are facing you can end up as the victor and if you're still not the victor it is not over let me rephrase that again and tell it to you in a way that you can take the, take this down in your notes you are it's not over until you have seen the victory come on it's not over in your finances until you've seen the victory it's not over in your body until you've seen the victory it's not over with your career until you've seen victory your life everything in your life must end in victory because we are on victory ground and that's why i want to say you are on victory ground you know this is this is a pandemic we are living in and if you have lost a loved one during the season our hearts go out to you we are praying with you of course you can always call us for prayer support and counseling but if the person that you lost if they were saved they did not die they only got relocated they did not get lost they just got home they did not lose they gained they gained promotion they gained access into the father's house how is heaven a failure at any time friend if you are loved one you know was saved now they are in heaven how can you call heaven a failure how can you call heaven a defeat it may seem like they lost the battle with corona but they won the war when it comes to the curse of the world you might lose a battle but the war has been won on the cross you are always a victor friend from the time you were called into Christ Jesus from the time you got saved you are on victor ground so don't say that the loved one that you lost lost a battle or it was a failure no my friend they fought a good fight and they won why because they kept their faith they may not have gotten their healing they may not have gotten their breakthrough but they kept their faith victory is in keeping your faith let me say that again victory is keeping your faith because the scripture says faith is the victory that overcomes the world the person that left you the loved one that you lost in this battle of the corona virus i'm telling you your loved one won because they kept their faith yes we miss them yes we are hurt but this is not forever don't call heaven a failure if you lost a loved one today i want you to rejoice in a different way and say my loved one is not lost they are at home and we are going to meet them soon but then this is the fact they are victors they are victors this is victory and i want to tell you just because you lost a loved one just because you lost a job just because you lost your health just because you lost your finances does not mean you are a loser what you're going through does not have the power to determine your identity what you are facing does not have the power to determine your destiny who you are is hidden in Christ Jesus you are on victory ground and just because this pandemic came your life is not over because i want to tell you my friend one thing that excited me the story is this genesis 9:28 the scripture says after the flood noah lived to 350 years after the flood noah lived to 350 years i am telling you there is life after the flood i'm telling you there is life after this pandemic life after a loss life after a death of a loved one life after you've been fired life after you've been infected life after you've spent everything you have life after a financial struggle just because the flood happened does not mean your life is over there is life after this pandemic oh somebody needs to give god praise hallelujah there is life after this pandemic hallelujah thank you jesus put that in the live chat look at your neighbor tell them there is life after this pandemic because we are victors we are on victory ground hallelujah come on how many of you are on the mountain can you can, can you you know look around yourself imagine you are on mount ararat look around and you can say i am on resurrected ground i am on cursed rivers ground i am on victory crown and you know what's the other thing that we've got to remember we've got to remind ourselves what noah and his sons would have gotten you know into their hearts after they got out of the ark and after the flood you know what when the door was open when they came out guess what would have been some of the most predominant thoughts in the minds of the family members that day they saw how god was sovereign they saw how god was still on the top they saw how everything happened according to the plan of god the waters came in the rain for 40 days exactly 40 days nothing more not one day more not one day less 
God was in control. The animals came into the ark two by two. Not seven, not seven animals in one species or 21 animals in another species. Exactly two by two. God was on the throne. He was in control. They saw how God, you know, was controlling even the flood. The winds blew and the waters receded. We just read that from the passage. Everything happened according to the plan of God. You know what these people would have said when they came out of the ark? They would have said, our God is on the throne. Our God is seated above. Our God is still in control. Our God is still sovereign. And I want to tell you perspective number four. Look at life today. And in the midst of everything that's happening in the world. You and I have to boldly say that our God is still on the throne. Wow. Our God is still on the throne. Psalm 29. David writes this hymn. I believe while he was watching a storm. You see, David was an outdoors man. He spent uh, nearly 13 years fleeing from Saul. M most of those 13 years were spent in caves and in forests. And David says, perhaps he was hiding from Saul when he wrote this hymn. But David says, verse number three, the voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. See, he's in a storm. He's probably hiding in a cave, but he's looking at these flood waters. You know why? Why I say flood? Because it's a heavy rain. Then he says, in the heavy rain, the voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. Now, cedars of Lebanon are very, very strong. They are strong, majestic trees. But the thunder storm that David was in, it just made these uh, cedars to skip like a calf. The voice of the Lord divides the flames of fire and it shakes the wilderness. And this was a huge storm. But in the midst of the storm, David goes back to the story of Noah's flood. Right? We'll go to verse number 10. Verse number 10. And he remembers something about the flood of Noah. That's why he says, the Lord sat enthroned at the flood. No, he's not talking about any flood. He's talking about the flood. No, it's the flood. Definite article. It's pointing to the flood of Noah. Many Bible scholars agree on this fact. The Lord sat enthroned at the flood. The Lord sits as king forever. Right in the midst of the storm that David was facing, he remembers the flood of Noah and says, you know what, I can relax. Because at the flood, in the original flood of Noah, Noah and his family were secure because the Lord was always the king. The Lord sat enthroned in the midst of the flood. And so is the Lord seated today as the king. While Saul was pursuing him and hunting his life down, David could say, the Lord is on the throne. And he remembered the flood of Noah. And now, here's perspective number four. You've got to say, if you're on Mount Ararat, you will have the gumption and the boldness to say, the Lord is still on the throne. My God is still on the throne. No matter how great the storms of life may be, God is still on the throne. That's why David ended with the hymn, ended the hymn with words when he said, the Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. And today I want to tell you, regardless of everything that's happening in the world, God is still on the throne. The God who created the heavens and the earth, he is still on the throne. You belong to him. He is your dad. He loves you. He cares for you. If the most powerful being in the world is my daddy, I will relax. I will rest because the ark is resting. See, the ark is our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of the father even today. He is not, he is not up frantically walking down the pavement in heaven, the gold pavement of course. Not walking along the corridors of heaven saying, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? This COVID-19 situation. I thought it, it, it's all, it was all over with the first wave, but now it's the second wave. Oh God, what do I do? Oh Father, what do I do? No, no, no. Jesus is not pacing the floor. He is still seated at the right hand of the Father. Where are you and I? We are in Christ Jesus. So if Jesus is seated, so will we be. Why? Because my God 
is still on the throne and the father looked at jesus and told him sit at my right hand i will make your enemies your footstool and that's what we've got to do as people of god today in the midst of this pandemic have a restful mentality sit down because god is still on the throne oh i want you to do that sit down in your emotions sit down when it comes to the questions about your future sit down when it comes to what's happening in the world sit down because god is still on the throne i want you to raise your hand and say my god is still on the throne that is perspective number 4 you and i are on mount ararat had the ararat perspective today come on the flood came to an end so will this pandemic but while it's still happening stay on the top stay on the top have an ararat perspective number 1 you're on resurrected ground no matter how many times you fall you will still rise back up again because that's there in your nature look at the enemy and say i don't know i can't help it i'm i'm just going to rise back up i'm like a balloon filled with air you push try to push me down into a bucket of water but i am going to rise up i'm going to spring up regardless of what happens why you look at the devil and say i don't know i can't help it i am a child of god disease is like scratching the head like i don't know why this guy is getting up up over and over again you look at the devil you look at sickness you look at financial struggle and say you know what try your best give your best shot but it's not going to be enough because the resurrection power of god on the inside is greater than anything that can happen to me come on and you are on no curse ground you and i are on victory ground come on there's life after this flood and you and i are in a place where we are in the kingdom of god because you and i are in the kingdom of god god is still the king you see we don't belong in this world we are ambassadors in this world our finances come from heaven because that is where we are a citizen of heaven is where we have our citizenship and our protection comes from heaven our security comes from heaven so regardless of what is happening all around us god is seated on the throne when it comes to your life and when it comes to my life as believers god is still on the throne Amen. God is still on the throne. God is still crowned. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So I want you to say, if the lo- if the ark is resting, so do you and I have to do rest in the ark. Look at your neighbor and tell them, the ark is resting, so you better rest. Rest because God is working something wonderful. You know when you look at the story of Noah and his children in the ark, one one of the most important thing that comes to light is the fact that they were all very patient they believed in a good god you see they were in the ark for a very long time dr warren vsb says they were in the ark for a year and 17 days can you imagine being in the ark for you for a year and 17 days friend you and i two weeks locked down we are god when is this going to get over you know like one week quarantine if you were there a quarantine you were like when is this going to get over but one year and 17 days and the ivp bible uh, background commentary says they were in the ark for a year and 11 days but whatever it is it's more than a year friend and that's a very long time i know they had chose to do they had devotional time they had prayer time and uh, they they spoke about a few things they played around with a few animals right but then friend it's quite a long time and let's take something from this family today and say i'm going to wait on the lord i'll give you a few things where they had to wait first they got into the ark 7 days before the rain so they had to wait for the rain for 7 days and then they had to wait for the rain to stop after 40 days and then we read the water rose until 110 days more so they had to wait for 110 days to get over and then they waited another 150 days for the water to be receded and then 2 months and 10 days later god told them go out you see it's fascinating even after the dove came back with olive leaf in its mouth noah never went out of the ark he was still waiting on the lord and his instruction and after many days god said go out that's a year and you know more than 11 to 17 days what do we get from noah's story rest this pandemic is, is going to come to an end so what do i do brother perhaps you are in a period of lockdown in your city maybe you are quarantined or you you are in this work from home thing and uh, it's just messing you up and you are not able to concentrate on work nor on family or things are really you know are in disarray what do you do what do you do we do what the people of god did in the world 
Hebrews chapter 6 verse number 12 says by faith and patience you will inherit the promises not just faith but faith is shown in your durability faith is shown in your perseverance that's why Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number 35 says do not cast away your confidence which has great reward be confident of the goodness of God verse number 36 for you have need of endurance endure yes you will come to a place where you will enjoy but endure for now so that after you have done the will of God it doesn't say after the flood it does yes there is life after the flood it doesn't say after the pandemic it says after you've done the will of God you may receive the promise you see we have promises from God and we say God when is this promise going to be fulfilled in my life God is saying promise is good hold on to the promise but make sure your focus is on my will keep doing my will and when you've done the will of God you will receive the promise of God hallelujah you will receive the promise of God so I want to tell you ask God about his will for your life during this pandemic yes I said it don't just wait in your home during the period of lockdown do what God has called you to do this is a powerful statement uh, we've come to the end of the message but I'm going to give you three powerful points on what you do discover the will of God and pour yourself into it yes while you are at home while you are in a period of lockdown perhaps while you are in this situation in this pandemic work from home no job whatever it is discover the will of God and keep doing the will of God keep doing the will of God don't worry about what's happening in the world keep your eyes on the will of God for your life and keep moving forward a great man of God says the safest place in the universe is in the will of God write that down the safest place in the universe is in the will of God so you and I need to have the boldness and the courage to say I am not in a pandemic I am in the will of God you know I know and his children were safe they were in the will of God they were in the ark but they were in the will of God if somebody asked Noah what were you doing in the flood Noah would say I wasn't in the flood I was in the will of God because the children Noah his wife their wives they were all in the will of God the safest place is in the will of God that's why when you pursue the will of God God will protect you when you are doing the will of God protection is yours so in this pandemic find out what the will of God is don't just be idle don't be lazy I want to talk to dear children of God who is who are listening to me today you know what my friend use these days get up early get yourself ready get into the word do something that is profitable for the day make yourself profitable you might be in a very different situation friend everybody all of our routines are messed up you know all of our schedules are disturbed but you've got to make best use of the day this day is never going to come again so if you might be at home but make use of the day pursue the will of God amen pursue the will of God and here's another thought don't go by what you feel don't go by what you feel oh you listen to the news and somebody says here's a new symptom here's a new symptom that points to that disease and this disease and all of a sudden you begin to check yourself and and when you when you you know start checking yourself and all of a sudden hey maybe I do have that symptom don't go by what you feel many a times the devil brings lying symptoms let me say that again many a times the devil brings lying symptoms fake symptoms that doesn't really have a root you know so don't go by what you feel and by all means if, if the symptoms are severe and uh, you're suffering I would really say you know take the help of a doctor get a treatment get a diagnosis God is with you let's fight this battle together like I told you we are there to pray for you and support you counsel you we are believing with you for your health and you know what every person who's affected with corona that's called me I've told them give a fight back aim for victory aim for life aim to come out of it Oh, we are victors. I keep reminding them of that, you know. But I want to tell you, don't go by, go by what you feel. I don't know, and his family, one year, 17 days. Can you imagine all the different kind of emotions they would have had on the ark for this period of time? I'm sure they felt nauseous. Because the ark, you know, was hit by the waves. And maybe they fell down, they stumbled. And I don't know, but maybe some of them on the ark vomited, you know, because they felt so nauseous. Some of us are, you know, you travel, you know, car, bus or bike, you know, you throw up, but uh, there's nauseousness. Maybe they felt nauseous and maybe you, your name is nausea. Who knows? But the point is this, my friend, don't go by what you feel. Go by what God has promised you. 
what an amazing word that was go by his promises don't go by what you feel no matter how noah and his family felt in the ark those days which was tossed on the waters they were safe in god's will they patiently waited for god to complete his work and to put them back on the earth with a brand new assignment and number 3 thought number 3 i want you to take this into your heart god is working something for your good while you are going through the flood god is working out something amazing in your life he's doing something great he's doing something wonderful in your future there is a future for you I want you to raise your hand and say god is working out something god is working out something yes put that in the live chat god is working out something he's working something amazing in my future god has the steering in his hand he is the head of the ship you know noah wasn't in the deck you know looking for directions but god was doing it all he was the pilot of the ship that day you are in the ark called christ jesus god is the head and regardless of where you're heading your future is good yes my friend your future is good god is taking to a higher place no one and his children never knew that god was taking them up to a mountain maybe you're in the flood today and you're wondering where is my life going all my dreams are in a standstill all my plans have been interrupted my routine has been abrupted my regular my my dreams my vision is in question what do i do number 1 seek the will of god and pour yourself into it number 2 don't go by feelings go by promises number 3 This is number 3 my friend. Know that God is working out this flood for your good. He's working something good. You know, every time in your life God is working something out to surprise you. And even at this moment, at this moment wherever you are, God is working on your behalf. He is the pilot of your ship and he's steering you towards an elevation, steering you towards a blessed addition. there is blessed there are blessed additions waiting for you a new friend a new business idea a new possession a new land a new dream perhaps a child you're believing god for is coming in this year very soon perhaps god is you know having something amazing in store and i believe that is going to happen wow if you're believing god for marriage you're wondering how am i ever going to be married in this situation god is making a way he's making a way god is the head of the ship and he is smiling down on you he loves you and something good is going to happen in your life hallelujah how many are receiving this word today are you receiving this word today have the ararat perspective amen this book which robert louis stevenson wrote was about a storm and in this story he describes a ship that is caught off a rocky coast threatening death to all who are on board so there was this rocky place and uh, the ship is just meandering through this place and there was terror on the face of the passengers they were expecting the worst but one man among all the people in the passengers list has the guts and the gumption to climb up to where the pilot was right he goes to the post of the pilot and he looks at the face of the pilot with terror in his face panic stricken but while the pilot was steering the ship he turns around and looks at this bold guy and he smiles the pilot smiles at this guy whose face was panic stricken and at that moment the story says the man rushed to the deck below and he starts shouting he says i have seen the face of the pilot and he smiled all is well all is well because the pilot is smiling and that sight of that smiling face of the pilot averted panic and converted despair into hope and today i want to tell you something my friend God is the pilot he is steering your ship to a wonderful place to an amazing destination and maybe the rock you know maybe the ship is rocking in the midst of waves and billows and the winds of this world maybe your life your family is being you know you are just meandering through this rocky course and you're wondering what is happening I want you to look at the face of God shown in the promises of the word. I want you to see the smile of God on his face and I want you to take this hope into your heart and say all is well. Come on, say that out. Say that out loud. Say all is well. I have seen the face of the pilot. He is smiling. All is well. I have seen the face of my God. 
in this worldwide pandemic he is smiling and all is well he is his heart is off to you he loves you he, he cares for you he's working out something good but here's another thing he's smiling down on you and all is well and everything is going to work out for your good in Jesus name if you receive this word today why don't you give him a shout of praise why don't you give him a thank offering hallelujah god is amazing why don't you stand to your feet wherever you are and just praise god and say i am on the mountain and i'm going to have a mountain perspective i'm going to have an ararat perspective number one i am on resurrection ground i might fall seven times but i'm going to get back up again number two i am on curse reverse ground no more curses this corona virus is a curse and it is not going to attack me and you know what way more than that better than that this curse is working for my good number 3 we are on victory crown number 17 is a number for victory we are on victory crown just because you lost a possession you lost a job finances or a loved one does not mean you are a loser you are a victor no matter what you lose in this world you are a victor you are on victory crown number 4 you are in a place where god is the king God is the king. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Are you praising him? Are you thanking him? Come on, raise your hands. Give a give it up all to God. Give it up all to God. He is a wonderful God. He is the king of kings and the lord of lords. O rama shante rika bala banduru. O rila barenda rika lere bondarula. The presence of God is filling the place wherever you are, the house you're living in right now. He's filling you. He's giving you hope. Let your despair be turned to hope in Jesus name. He is smiling on you and that's all that you need to move and fa- move forward in faith and in hope. Thank you Jesus. O ria bara shante re bo kola rabantara. Thank you heavenly father want you to prepare the communion elements take them in your hand and start thanking him thank you jesus thank you father thank you jesus thank you jesus daddy we love you thank you for your grace all is well everything is going to end for the good of god's people thank you jesus lift up the body of the lord repeat after me say lord jesus for by your stripes i am healed For by your stripes I am made whole. For by your stripes no more sicknesses or diseases. For by your stripes no more curses on my body. And by your stripes I am healthy, whole and safe in Christ Jesus. Receive the body of the Lord for you in faith. Lift up the cup and declare with me. Repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, for by your blood I am made righteous. For by your blood I am made worthy. For by your blood I am a victor. For by your blood I am no more under a curse. Say, by your blood, everything is working out for my good in Jesus' name. receive the blood of the lord for you in faith lift up your hands wherever you are give him thanks and praise because you're on a mountain you're not down below in a valley you are on a mountain you might be sick you might be in a season of financial struggle or lack you might be in a place where your family is really not going through a wonderful time but you are on a mountain you are not in a valley you are on a mountain mountain called ararat Thank him. Thank you Jesus. Thank you heavenly Father. Let's all pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this amazing word. Thank you for the wonderful service and your presence that blessed us so much in this service. We pray for every person watching this message, Lord. Everyone who listened to this word. We pray divine protection over their families in Jesus name. What do you say? Amen and receive that. Lord, we pray divine protection. Cover them with your blood in Jesus name. Let your fire be a fence around their families in Jesus name. No covid-19 near our homes in Jesus name. Bless us, guide us and protect us all through the season and may we end up in our destination very soon in Jesus name. Thank you heavenly Father. Thank you Lord for speaking to our hearts. Protection, healing and deliverance belong to us. Bless everyone with your love. Thank you for speaking to us today. 
thank you for every goodness that's been stored lord until we meet again thank you for your guidance and your protection we pray everything we commit everything into your hands in jesus name and the people of god said amen raise your hands say amen and receive the benediction may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord make his face shine upon you and give you grace may the lord lift up his countenance over you bless you with shalom peace in all the areas of your life in jesus name in jesus name come on put your hands together he's a wonderful god he's on the throne your god is on the throne amen like david said the other day i see the lord enthroned in the midst of the flood in the midst of the flood the lord is still on the throne he's working everything for your good so until i meet you again next week we are there to pray with you and believe with you we are reaching out to you with our prayers god is with you we are praying for you god bless you